Yeah, talking freedom and liberation. Worldwide, not just only for the nation. A radical guide, it's time to make changes. Bringing interviews and radical education. Yeah, yeah, a better future. What we really Welcome to a radical podcast. I'm your host, Jason Bayless. This is your go-to platform where we explore the radical aspects of life, culture, history, and the journey for social justice around the globe. Starting with our anarchist and radical news segment, we spotlight the courageous resistance in Maxmoor, Iraq. This story unfolds a real-time narrative of the ongoing struggles for autonomy and self-determination that are taking place worldwide. Transitioning into our central theme for the day in the Resistance Around the World segment, we dive deep into the omnipresent and deeply entrenched phenomenon of class struggle. We'll journey through time, from ancient class conflicts to contemporary social movements, illuminating the concept of class struggle, its historical manifestation, varied theoretical perspectives, its role in capitalist societies, and its significance in our present-day world. As we wrap up in our updates about a radical guide section, we tune into the revolutionary rhythms and movements of the sounds of the South. This is a political arts collective that uses music and dance as powerful tools of protest. We'll explore the history of Toi Toi, a protest dance that echoes resistance, and you'll get to sway to the beat of their inspiring track, Toi Toi Lives On. So buckle up for a thought-provoking journey. Let's get started. Let's go! This week's anarchist and radical news focuses on the people of Maxmoor, who steadfastly resist the Iraqi state's attempt to besiege their camp. This resistance, demonstrated by their collective action of forming human barriers against military forces, has been ongoing for five days as of May 24, 2023. The community's resilience in this crisis is palpable, with their continued resistance happening day and night. People of all ages, from children to the elderly, are participating in this act of defiance against the military. This move by the Iraqi state marks an unprecedented escalation since the 2014 ISIS attack. The camp's inhabitants, around 12,000 refugees, have clarified their demands during negotiations with a UN representative. Despite this, the Iraqi army remains persistent in their siege. In response to these events, Tevgera Azadi has called for adherence to international refugee law and raised allegations about the Turkish state exerting pressure on Baghdad to dismantle the camp. Furthermore, they criticized the Kurdistan Democratic Party, KDP, for imposing a heavy embargo on the camp since July 17, 2019, instead of serving the refugees. This embargo has seriously threatened the camp inhabitants' lives, as it restricts their access to basic needs and medical care, with reports of many losing their lives due to this severe condition. This report comes to us courtesy of Abolition Media, an online news source that provides information about revolutionary movements and local struggles worldwide. The situation in Maxmoor illustrates the challenges many marginalized and displaced communities face worldwide, underlining the necessity of continued resistance and international solidarity. We support the people of Maxmoor and will continue to follow this story as it develops. A radical guy, that's what this that's is. What this Highlighting is. the diverse world of resistance. In this Resistance Around the World segment, we dive into a topic central to societal transformations and social upheavals throughout history, class struggle. Before we dive in, let's take a moment to define a couple of crucial terms. Firstly, class refers to a group of people in society who share similar economic positions, often determined by their relationship to the means of production, income, wealth, and occupation. Class struggle, then, is a social and political conflict where different classes, typically the working class or proletariat, and the owning class or bourgeoisie, have opposing interests and compete for resources, power, and societal advantages. It's a struggle that has shaped the course of societies and the lives of individuals from ancient times to the present day. In today's episode, we will explore the intricate dynamics of class struggle, tracing its roots across diverse historical periods, societies, and political contexts. We'll delve into early instances of class struggle, like the conflict of the orders in the Roman Republic, the peasants' revolt in medieval England, and more. We'll also analyze class struggle through various theoretical lenses, including Marxist and Weberian perspectives, and how it intersects with other social inequalities. Furthermore, we'll look at the role of class struggle in capitalist societies 
referencing significant events such as the 1968 protests in France and the Canute revolts in Lyon. We hope to provide a deeper understanding of class struggle and its enduring influence on our world. So join us as we delve into the tumultuous world of class struggle, and let's uncover the lessons it has for us today. Before we delve into historical examples, it's important to understand why class struggle exists. It is rooted in societal structures and economic systems that perpetuate inequality. From a broad perspective, societies throughout history have been organized in ways that tend to privilege certain groups over others. These privileged groups, generally characterized by their control over resources and means of production, form the upper or dominant classes. Meanwhile, those with less control over such resources fall into lower or subordinate classes. This differential control over resources creates a fundamental economic disparity between the classes. However, it isn't just about economics. Class structures also influence other social dynamics, including political power, social status, and cultural norms. This multitude of factors interact and contributes to the persistence of class divisions, making class struggle a complex and multifaceted issue. With this context in mind, let's explore some historical instances of class struggle that have shaped societies across eras and continents. As we delve into the annals of history, we see that class struggle is not a modern phenomenon, but a thread that runs deep through the fabric of human societies. The root cause of class struggle is the inequitable distribution of resources and power perpetuated by societal structures and economic systems. These systems privilege certain groups, those that control the resources and means of production, while disenfranchising others. Our first stop is the Roman Republic, where the conflict of the orders between patricians and plebeians unfolded. The patricians, who formed the privileged class, held most of the political power, while the plebeians, the disenfranchised, sought political equality. Their fight led to the creation of the Tribune of the Plebs, a significant political reform that challenged the unjust distribution of power, symbolizing an early triumph of class struggle. Next, we travel to England in 1381 to witness the Peasants' Revolt. The peasants, burdened by serfdom and high taxes, rose against their economic oppression. Their revolt challenged the entrenched feudal system and led to a gradual end to serfdom, further demonstrating how class struggle could disrupt systems of economic inequality. The French Revolution of 1789 serves as our next example. Here, the Third Estate, comprising the common people, rose against the economic and political dominance of the aristocracy. The revolution resulted in overthrowing the monarchy and establishing a republic, demonstrating how class struggle can dismantle existing power structures and establish more equitable ones. Finally, we examine the Paris Commune of 1871. This short-lived socialist and anarchist government in Paris was established by the working-class Parisians revolting against the conservative French government. The Commune challenged the economic disparities and power dynamics of the time, providing a concrete example of class struggle leading to experiments in alternative forms of governance. These historical instances show the enduring influence of class struggle in shaping societal structures and instigating change. Each instance underscores a common theme, class struggle as a catalyst for transformative change, driving societies toward more equitable distributions of power and resources. These instances reflect the persistent struggle against economic disparities and the concentration of power, giving form to the enduring quest for a more equitable and just society. Having glimpsed the past, let's now turn our attention to various theoretical perspectives that offer deeper insights into the phenomenon of class struggle. Understanding these perspectives can further inform our recognition and critique of class struggles, providing us with tools to confront their manifestations in contemporary societies. To comprehend class struggle, one cannot overlook Karl Marx, a philosopher, economist, and revolutionary socialist whose ideas have profoundly influenced political discourse and praxis. In Marx's view, class struggle is the engine of history, a conflict that underlies societal change and development. Marx conceptualizes class struggle as a conflict between the proletariat, the working class, and the bourgeoisie, the owning class. According to Marx, the proletariat is exploited by the bourgeoisie in capitalist societies. Marx used the term surplus value to describe this exploitation, 
Simply put, surplus value refers to the idea that the value of a product produced by labor is greater than the actual cost of labor itself. This extra value is then taken by the capitalist, or the owner, as profit. Marx argued that this exploitation would eventually lead to a proletariat revolution, establishing a socialist state where the means of production are commonly owned. One historical example illustrating Marx's theory is the October Revolution in Russia in 1917. The revolution was led by the Bolshevik Party, which represented the interests of the working class against the provisional government of the bourgeoisie. This event established the world's first socialist state, reflecting the revolutionary potential that Marx attributed to class struggle. From a Marxist perspective, class struggle is not merely a byproduct of capitalism, but is at the core of this economic system. Next, we will discuss another sociologist's view on class struggle, Max Weber, whose ideas add another layer of complexity to our understanding of class struggle. Max Weber, a renowned sociologist and political economist who added new dimensions to the concept of class struggle. Unlike Marx, who primarily focused on the economic aspects, Weber looked at class struggle through a wider lens. Weber agreed with Marx that class struggle existed, but he expanded the concept by saying that one's social position wasn't determined by economic class alone. Instead, Weber suggested that our social status is also influenced by our social prestige and power. To explain this, Weber introduced the terms status groups and parties. In Weber's view, status groups are communities defined by common lifestyles, privileges, and the level of honor they hold in society. Think of them as social circles where people with similar prestige group together. On the other hand, parties in Weber's theory are groups of individuals who come together to achieve a certain goal within a particular social or political sphere. They could be groups that form around common interests and work towards shared objectives. Weber's model shows a society where different groups struggle for wealth, social prestige, and power. This leads to a more complex and layered form of social stratification, where the lines between classes aren't just drawn by wealth, but also by social honor and power dynamics. Moreover, Weber disagreed with Marx's idea that class struggle would necessarily lead to a complete transformation of society. Instead, Weber believed that different classes could negotiate and compromise within the existing social structure, effectively managing class struggles without a revolutionary upheaval. Weber's perspective helps us see class struggle in a broader context and emphasizes the role of various social factors in shaping our society. His views counter Marx's, adding depth and complexity to our understanding of class struggle. Next, let's discuss a few other perspectives on class struggle. While we've explored class struggle from a few specific angles, it's important to remember that it is complex and multifaceted. Various other perspectives can further expand our understanding of it. One such perspective is the idea of intersectionality. This term, born from critical race theory, suggests that different aspects of identity, like race, gender, and sexuality, can intersect with class, shaping a person's experience of society. Think of it this way. A person isn't just defined by class. Their race, gender, and sexuality can also impact their social standing and struggle. On another note, elite theory sees society as divided between a small governing elite and the larger masses. In this view, the class struggle isn't just about economic resources. It's also a fight for representation and influence in the face of concentrated power. The masses struggle to have their voices heard and their interests considered by the elite. Finally, we have pluralist models. These perspectives view society as a complex web of interest groups competing for resources and influence. From this viewpoint, power isn't just held by the economic classes. It's distributed amongst various groups with interests and agendas. With these perspectives in mind, we gain a richer, more diverse understanding of class struggle. It's not just about wealth or labor. It's a complex interplay of many societal factors. Now that we've seen the many faces of class struggle, let's look at how it manifests in capitalist societies. Under capitalist systems, wealth is primarily created by private businesses aiming to profit. This structure inherently forms a divide between two main classes, those who own and control these businesses and those who work for wages. These stark divisions often lead to significant social and economic inequalities, 
providing the basis for class struggle. Let's use a couple of examples to unpack this further. Our first example is the 1968 protests in France, often called May 68. Initially, these demonstrations were led by students calling for educational reform. They were dissatisfied with a system they felt needed to be more traditional and restrictive. Soon, however, it wasn't just students filling the streets. Millions of French workers, from factory workers to train drivers, joined the movement. They demanded improved wages and better working conditions, embodying the proletariat's struggle against the bourgeoisie. The protests quickly escalated into a general strike, paralyzing the country and shaking the foundations of the Gaullist government. Despite the wide array of protesters, the common thread was a demand for a profound societal change, a move away from capitalist structures they felt were contributing to social inequality and stifling personal freedoms. Our second example takes us back to the Canute revolts in Lyon, France in the 1830s. Silk workers, the Canutes, lived in incredibly tough conditions with long hours and low wages. When their bosses cut wages even further, the workers decided enough was enough. They rose against their employers in one of industrial Europe's first large-scale worker uprisings. These revolts demonstrated the potential power of organized labor. Despite the state's violent response, the Canutes persisted, and their demands for better pay were eventually met. This event highlights how collective action by the proletariat can challenge and even disrupt capitalist exploitation. These examples show the potential of class struggle as a driving force for social change within capitalist societies. But class struggle isn't just about challenging capitalism. There are other perspectives to consider, which we'll explore next. As a political philosophy and movement, anarchism has unique views on class struggle. Anarchists reject hierarchical social relations and believe in creating a society based on voluntary, cooperative relationships. They see the state and capitalism as key contributors to class inequality and advocate for their abolition. Among anarchists, Mikhail Bakunin stands out as a significant figure. Bakunin was a Russian revolutionary and one of the primary proponents of anarchism in the 19th century. He believed class struggle was intrinsically linked to the struggle against the state and capitalism. For Bakunin, regardless of its form, the state is a tool for one class to oppress another, often used by the owning class to maintain its privileges and control over the working class. He argued for dismantling state structures and establishing a society based on voluntary cooperation and mutual aid. Bakunin's ideas can be seen in action in several historical events, which can help illuminate the anarchist perspective on class struggle. Take, for instance, the Spanish Civil War from 1936 to 1939. During this conflict, anarchist groups played a significant role in the fight against the nationalist forces who aimed to establish a fascist state. The anarchists advocated for and implemented worker self-management and collective ownership in areas they controlled directly confronting both capitalism and state socialism. Another crucial event we need to consider is the Seattle General Strike of 1919. Involving about 65,000 workers, this strike was more than a labor dispute. It was a profound example of self-organization and solidarity that mirrors anarchist principles. For five days, the city's workers effectively took control of Seattle, refusing to work until their demands were met. This event was not strictly anarchist act. Not all participants identified as anarchists, and the organized labor movement led it. However, it embodied some key aspects of anarchist theory and practice. The strike was largely peaceful and demonstrated the power of the working class when organized outside the traditional state and capitalist structures, a concept deeply rooted in anarchist thought. While the strike didn't achieve all its goals, it served as a potent symbol of collective action and resistance against class exploitation, which resonates strongly with anarchist ideals. Moreover, it affirmed the possibility of worker self-management and a challenge to the state's authority and the capitalist system. These events underscore the anarchist viewpoint of class struggle, a struggle against economic exploitation and state authority and hierarchy. They offer an understanding of how class struggle, viewed through an anarchist lens, can be linked to broader social and political transformation struggles. Class struggle continues to shape our world today, playing out in various social, political, and economic arenas. 
the increasing wealth gap, the disproportionate power held by a small number of multinational corporations, and pressing social issues like homelessness reflect contemporary class struggles. One of the most prominent movements of recent times is Occupy Wall Street, which began in 2011 in response to the financial crisis 2008. The movement protested the disproportionate wealth and influence of the wealthiest 1%, calling out the unfairness of a system where a small minority controls a vast majority of the wealth. At the same time, many suffer from poverty and economic insecurity. Occupy Wall Street spurred a global conversation about economic inequality and the failings of the capitalist system, serving as a potent expression of class struggle in the 21st century. In 2018, France saw the rise of the Yellow Vests movement. Initially triggered by rising fuel prices, the movement quickly morphed into a broader protest against economic inequality, high living costs, and the perceived indifference of the French government to the struggles of the working and middle classes. This movement brought together people from different social classes to challenge the existing economic order. However, it's important to clarify that while the Yellow Vest movement aimed to address economic inequalities, the Yellow Vest symbol has been co-opted by various groups, particularly far-right groups in other countries, deviating from its original purpose. This segment focuses on the movement's origins and objectives in France. We are committed to understanding and discussing the authentic motivations behind such social movements and not supporting or endorsing their co-opted interpretations or uses. The rise of unhoused individuals and families is another stark manifestation of class struggle today. Housing insecurity, often driven by rising rents, stagnant wages, and a lack of affordable housing, highlights the systemic issues inherent in capitalist societies. It serves as a potent reminder of how the interests of those at the top can be pitted against those of the lower and middle classes. These contemporary instances of class struggle are not isolated events but interconnected with the broader economic inequality and social injustice patterns that mark our world today. They serve as modern echoes of the historical struggles we've explored earlier, underlining the ongoing relevance and urgency of class struggle in our quest for a more equitable society. Throughout this episode, we've delved deep into the heart of class struggle, illuminating its pervasive and enduring role in shaping human societies, both past and present. From the conflict of the orders in the Roman Republic to the contemporary Occupy Wall Street movement and the Yellow Vests protests in France, we've traced the thread of class struggle as it weaves through the tapestry of our collective history. In doing so, we've explored the historical instances of class struggle and delved into various theoretical perspectives that shed light on this intricate dynamic. We've discussed the Marxist view of class struggle as the engine of history and the economic underpinnings of this conflict. We've explored Max Weber's nuanced perspective that extends the class struggle beyond economic dimensions, considering the influence of status groups and parties. We also considered Mikhail Bakunin's anarchist view on class struggle and the state's role in perpetuating class hierarchies. Moreover, we've seen how class struggle manifests itself in capitalist societies and examined how contemporary movements challenge the status quo and drive efforts toward a more equitable society. In particular, we've highlighted how issues like the wealth gap, the power of multinational corporations, and homelessness are stark reminders of ongoing class struggles. In this exploration, we've acknowledged class struggles' complexity and its intersection with other forms of social inequality, such as race, gender, and sexuality, thereby broadening our understanding of this phenomenon. Our journey through the dynamics of class struggle is a powerful reminder that the quest for a more equitable society is ongoing. As we face the challenges of the 21st century, understanding and addressing class struggle is pertinent and essential in our endeavor to shape a more just and equitable future. Hopefully, this Resistance Around the World segment will deepen your understanding of class struggle, demonstrating its profound and enduring influence on our societies. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more insightful discussions that provoke thought, stir curiosity, and inspire action toward a better world. Radical education, yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need, not rooted in capitalism or supremacy. This week, our featured location is Zimbabwe, and the vibrant history of Toyi Toyi a form of protest dance that has become a symbol of resistance, unity, and liberation. 
originating in Zimbabwe during the liberation struggle against colonial rule, Toi Toi was brought to South Africa by Zimbabwean recruits to the African National Congress. The dance, characterized by high knee lifting and powerful chanting, quickly became a staple at anti-apartheid protests. Today, Toi Toi remains a powerful tool of expression and protest across various social movements globally, asserting oppressed communities' strength, resilience, and defiance. Speaking of Toi Toi, one group that pays homage to this tradition while pushing the boundaries of political art is the Sounds of the South, or SOS. SOS is a political arts collective of activists who use hip-hop and poetry to spread revolutionary messages, raise consciousness, and critique neoliberalism. Their goal? Liberation through music. To give you a taste of their music, we will play their song, Toi Toi Lives On. Zabalazu, Tangalazi, Tayo Chisela, Pangini Sikalaza, Besibamba for Utatum Tab, Pilanga Machala, Sismanga, Elinala, Tina Snavonga Maguala, Bopitego Sabala, Better Form Solution to every institution, Sunus Mela Sutela to any situation, was a Chona, was a Bona, Dalatina Sabalaza, was a Tonga, was a Combe, Sakus Kali Sabala, Sitting Galang and Kalokunga Betela Lufa, from Sabalazu Yakubeka, Dallas Beta Lupa, Zindawa and Dava Commands, Lundu Beta Lunan, for Sabalaza's Kabala. Continues, you never rest, you don't stop. Old generation to the next, it lives on. Petunga Matogi, so we fight till they fall. Pushum Zabala Zongoba six in Ezele. From the left to the right, ya bona koli corruption. From Otaba to Omeya, as is Jebele Hunchin. Wokus Pagaman will go to easy and at your solution. I say, pick up your arms, we got to fight back. Now they hip to the heart, hip hop, we don't stop. No bas to Melang Wokata, as Jiggy, we strike back. Now this to Bulanga Pulets, as Jiggy, we fight back. Even if they want us. Tina Sia Kubegega to my sisters and my brothers, I look to continue. No Babanga Balanga for Tina Sia Kobozela, and I saw this Pelamanda till the working class is free, and I saw this Pelamanda till the working class is free. Join a 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 join a
visit RadicalGuide.com and click the Add Listing button in the top right-hand corner. If you don't have a location to add but still wish to support a Radical Guide while on the site, click the Support ARG button in the top menu to explore ways to contribute. Remember, a Radical Guide thrives on the involvement of people like you. Let's go! And that wraps up another episode of A Radical Podcast. We've journeyed through the concept of class struggle, its historical and contemporary instances, and the power of the people to resist and strive for a more equitable society. We also traveled to Maxmoor, where the fight for autonomy and self-determination remains a pressing reality. We've also had the pleasure of experiencing the revolutionary rhythm of Toyi Toyi and the music of Sounds of the South, a shining example of using art for protest and resistance. Remember, our discussions here are just the tip of the iceberg. There is much more to learn, understand, and do. Visit A Radical Guide to learn more about the topics we've covered today and discover more about the fight for a more just world. I'm Jason Bayless, your host on A Radical Podcast, reminding you that the struggle continues, but so does the hope for a better tomorrow. Stand up, resist, and be heard. Until next time, stay radical. Yeah, talking freedom and liberation Worldwide, not just only for the nation A radical guide, it's time to make changes Bringing interviews and radical education Yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need Not rooted in capitalism or supremacy Yeah, yeah, trust you, don't want to miss it We bring the truth right to you The past, present, and future, let's go A, a radical guide, that's what this is Highlighting the diverse world of resistance Let's go